Hey y'all, we in Egypt. We're here to see the pyramids, eat some good food. We're gonna check out the city. Y'all ready? And I'm checking another thing off my bucket list. Let's go. Now y'all know I like to set up the scene for y'all when I start off these vlogs, but in Egypt, it's a lot of restrictions, especially when it comes to filming. So in order to make sure I got my camera inside the pyramids, I couldn't start filming until I got well inside. And once I got inside and seen them pyramids, man, I got super excited, but got to set up the scene. So let's start here. You guys, there's a moment. All right, y'all. Came all this way to touch the pyramids. This has been on my bucket list. Don't touch these pyramids. It's done. All right, time to go home, yeah. <laughs> you know, we waited all them years to touch the pyramids. It was on our bucket list to touch the pyramids. It just felt like stone. That stone you ain't touched before. That's true. All right, back to the pyramids. Number two, checked off my bucket list, touching the pyramids. You see it? You see Rome back there? I did it, y'all. It know, was his number one. It was my number two. One, I did it, y'all. Man. I did it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Just walking down. First one. Got plenty more to see. But look at the vastness of this, man. Two million stones. Two and a half tons. Wow. Now this is Hassan, he's our guide for the pyramids, and he was explaining to us why the second pyramid was so smooth at the top. Also, he showed us the wives' pyramids contrasted to the king's pyramid. That, that's funny. And the real names of the three pyramids before moving on. The big one is Khufu, Khufu. and the second one is Hafra. Hafra. The third one you'll see the later yes, is, the the back. is Min Ka Ra. Min Min Ka -ra. Ra. These are their names in hieroglyphic. Gotcha, okay? the real names. The real names. Yeah. And he always gave us time to ourselves to explore, and you know what we did. This pyramid thought it wasn't gonna get touched. That's what it thought. Let's go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Here we go. <laughs> All right. It's crazy out here. Like the vastness of these things, you have to see in person. Like everybody got to at least come see this one time in their life and touch them. Because to see it on camera, to see see it in textbooks is different from actually coming and touching it and seeing it in person. Like I'm blown away how they how they did this. And even the Egyptians don't know. We're with a historian right now. He know everything about these, but they don't know how they actually built it because they didn't leave a blueprint or anything. Everything makes sense for like the first, maybe 20 feet, right? Because you got to have your base level, standard architecture, boom, your base, house, boom. All that makes sense. Where it starts to get a little wild for me, especially when seeing it today, is one that these blocks are not small blocks. These blocks are about as big as this port, some of them. And then two, it wasn't no like machine, so they had rope and like le lever systems. But anybody who's moved, we done moved some stuff in our life. And when you move stuff, when you're going upstairs, that shit different. That shit different. And they moving blocks that way. How much, he said? Two and a half tons. Yeah, going up. And that's where it gets wild. God is great, man. I got another question for you about the pyramids. Okay. You think the aliens did it? Yeah. But we're going to keep exploring. I'm going to keep showing y'all. So let's go. That's 
three pyramids in front of you Great. and other three small pyramids over here. So altogether, nine pyramids in this area. Yeah. How many pyramids room do you think all over Egypt? So all far. Over, all over Egypt? Yes. Guess. You may give the right number and give you a good gift. 50. That's a good way, yeah. What do you think? 35. Ah. It's still far away. Oh, 80? 127. Oh, jeez. Oh. Okay. 127 so far. As I know. Now here, got all three of them in behind us. He said it's 127 pyramids in total in Egypt. Jeez. What you thinking? <laughs> Uh, astonished is the word I would have to use for it because who would have ever thunk? Did he say thunk? Who would ever thunk that thunk. we would get to experience this? You know, of course, it's always you say it and you, you're not sure if it's really going to happen. But then when it does happen, it feels so surreal and you... And you just be in the moment, man. I'm just in the moment. So I'm excited. And I, I feel like it's only up from here. I feel like I got some of the energy, the ancient energy. I feel like the ancestors was there representing. I feel like they poured into me. And so I want to take that energy back and pour it into my arts and my crafts. And uh, I'm just excited to be in Egypt, man. So right now, um, we gonna get on the horse, do the camel. It's a horse picture I always wanted to take that we're gonna get. Rome wanna get on the on the camel. So we negotiating right now. Hassan's gonna get us the best price. So we can uh, do this tourist thing. <laughs> but thus far, I'm I'm blown away. Like, y'all gotta see this in person. It is absolutely beautiful. What's crazy about this trip? I wrote it on my board at the beginning of the year. And I said it three times a day in the morning, in the afternoon, and night. And I want to come to Egypt. And now I'm here. So it's crazy how it can go from being written down to speaking it out loud to actually living it. And that's just a testament of manifestation. So if you want to want to achieve something in life, you want something in life, write it down, speak it out loud, visualize it, and then go after it. Because we in Egypt. Ready? Hey. Don't yell at me like that. Alright, alright. Ready, Ron? So, <laughs> one of those camels. I'm not riding. Is this oh, a, I'm going I'm doing the horse. You like horse? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Ro, how's the view? It's, it's interesting. The horse is coming, y'all. Right over the bend. That's what I'm gonna be riding. Nice. Bro, you good? You up there? I'm up there. You up there? <laughs> So we're riding right now. What's that? How is it just for brown sugar? It's good. It's great. It's brown good. sugar, great. Brown sugar. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, Mike. <laughs> oh yeah. So we're riding. We got to see the pyramids. Best views. I'll come back, y'all. Let me enjoy the ride. Was it? it was great. It was great. Thank you. <laughs> Alibaba is great. And yeah, Michael Jackson was great too. <laughs> yeah, just riding. Alibaba back up to Hassan. It's cool. I haven't been on a horse since I was a kid, so this is a cool experience to get back on a horse and experience this. It's happy to be here. 
Uh, you like the camel ride? That was fun. That was fun. He, was, he was up there. Oh, yeah. You, hey. you was up there. Yeah, he was, you was tall. Yeah, I was like, big boy is up here. <laughs> he was a nice camel. Uh, we bonded. Uh, his name was Joe. Joe. Yeah. Make, make, makes sense. Yeah, so. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is why you start early, guys. Because look how thick it is now. When we first got up here, we were the only people. Now it's thick. Gotta start early. <laughs> statue which we call the Sphinx. As a matter of fact, after King Kifrin built the second pyramid, he found in front of it a huge rock of stone. So he decided to use it, made it as a lion body with the human head, referring to the power of the animal and the wisdom of the man. So the Sphinx here, actual fact, represents the king himself, looking at the east side, where the sun rises from protecting, guarding the whole area behind. Boom! Sphinx. We, we used to read about this. We used to read about Come it. Come on, man. Man. We used to read about it. We spoke into existence. We read about it. Said we are going to be there. Sphinx. And now we're here. Sphinx. So make sure when you speak speaking stuff into existence, you visualize and you understand what you're doing. Because that's what we did. Sphinx. And I'm out on that. Riding horses in the camels. Sphinx. Came up in the Egypt dropping pounds. Sphinx. Up in the museum. Sphinx. Now we looking at the Sphinx. Sphinx. <laughs> now that we've seen the pyramids, time to go get some custom cologne made. Y'all ready? Alright. So we hit the streets of Cairo and headed to the oil shop, which is pretty popular in Egypt based on all the celebs on the wall. I can't lie, the shot was impressive, but nothing made more of an impression on us in this Egyptian heat than this. Bro, that's the best thing in this shot right now. So y'all, a little bit of facts about me. I'm an easy sweater. I sweat immediately. As soon as I step anything spicy, I sweat. I sweat immediately. Especially when I was fat. That was double sweat. <laughs> so this is the best thing. We've seen all day thus far. So we're gonna pick from these oils. These Egyptian chakra oils, the seven Veronic chakras. So I can see. Go get one made. The owner then used a demonstration to explain the difference between Europe and Egyptian oils and how they don't use alcohol in theirs, unlike other countries. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You're right. This is what I export in France. All European perfume inside, 80% alcohol. Okay. If you have perfume bottle, same thing. This is no good for the skin. King and the queen. Mm -hmm. Now, if you follow the list here, we have three different groups. Mm -hmm. The first group, she come from one flower. Mm -hmm. Second group, flower mixed together. Yeah. Number three group, this is especially for massage. Now okay. we need to smell the best five or six different types, okay? Oh, My friend, oh. you have a lot of here. Yeah. Lotus. This is king and the queen, Excuse honeymoon. Me. You can see the crown of Osiris, this is the lotus mm. flower. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Lotus mm -hmm. flower. Smell good, but these two the still one. winning. But lotus is very special because you can never find this up here. And this is the symbol of love for the Egyptians. When you get to the throne of King Tart, you will see the wife is offering him the lotus flower as a symbol of love. After all the laughter, we got down to business and negotiated some fair prices before heading back to the hotel. Now I ain't gonna lie, he was a good negotiator, but not better than Cam. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. He probably got me for a higher price than usual because I'm American and ain't no better. But, you know, I really wanted the oil. So, hey, I got it. I smell good. Can't take it from me. All right, y'all. <laughs> we did it. We did it, y'all. We did it. We touched the pyramids. We got the picture with the horse and the camel. And we got our oils and cologne. Everything we came to do, we accomplished. Now, all we got to do is touch the culture. Now we're we going to do fun. that tomorrow. So... Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. So today, you don't call me Cam. I'm only going by Big Silk. And today, we're gonna check out some museums 
We're going to go check out the culture of Egypt, because we're going to the Khan El Khalili, the bazaar. Let's get it. On one of these towers, the church was built. It is like hanged. That is the reason we call it the hanging church. Uh, third and fourth centuries AD. The oldest in Egypt. Being rebuilt and restored a few times. Yeah. Till, till about 3200 BC, it was divided into two main kingdoms, known as Upper and Lower Egypt. Okay. When we say Upper, we mean the southern part. Upper is the southern part. Yes. Okay. Lower is the northern part. That's opposite. You know, okay. all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's because of the River Nile, mm. one of the few rivers in the world flowing from south to north. Yeah. So upper is south, lower is north. So we're in old Cairo right now, taking a tour and to see the history and everything. We visited some churches, some mosques. He's explaining the history of the Christians and the Muslims, so it's been great. So right now, we're at the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization. About to go see the history of the civilization of Egypt, basically, and how it all came together. We just left the old Cairo, where we was looking at the history of Christianity. And then we're gonna go to the Citadel, and the Muhammad Ali Mosque, to check out the Muslim side. So right now, all right, salmon bucket, <laughs> big silk here. <laughs> we gonna go in here. It's nice. Are you ready? I'm ready. It's, it's bright out here. It's beautiful. I, 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 oh, I, 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 I just it. said you ready. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm ready. All right. So we just left the museum. Unfortunately, we can't film in there. There's strict on rules on what you can film and not can film in Egypt. But it was amazing. All the artifacts. But the best part is they have a part with all the mummies. So it's about like 20 mummies down there. You can read on the history of all of them. And man, that was amazing. But what's also amazing is this outside garden they got. Like, whoa, look at this. This is beautiful. Oh. That ain't so beautiful right there, but all of this, this is beautiful. <laughs> now we're going to the Citadel. pay five pounds for little booties to go on so everyone got their shoes off and nobody want to pay five pounds but out of respect you must take your shoes off before the citadel was constructed it was a famous fortress built by saladin on macadam hills which made it difficult for any foreign attack to be successful and then in 1830 muhammad ali no not the boxer started building the mosque the mosque is divided into two parts outside and inside and it's all made of alabaster, what we call the alabaster mosque of Muhammad Ali, mm. which was brought from you? Italy at the time. In the central part, you can see the fountain for ablution. Muslims got to wash themselves. As I'm going to talk in details when we go inside, before they go to pray, so they have to wash their hands, face, hands, feet. Just left the citadel and now we about to go to the bazaar. Let's get it. So I'm in the bazaar. It's a 500 year old maze filled with streets, stores, and markets. We're gonna do some shopping, we're gonna do some eating, and it's time to pray. So let's go. 
rods, mm -hmm. beads, mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. Different kinds of rugs here. Got everything. Silver. <laughs> so we just walked through the market and they just said, how can I take your money? I like the honesty. And yes. then another buddy said, yes, he said, he said, I don't know what you're looking for, but I got it in here. And I said, I'm not mad at it. Respect it. I, I got to respect it. it. I didn't get nothing, but I respect <laughs> it. <laughs> So guys, we have stopped for lunch at this spot right here. We're gonna get some authentic Egyptian food. And I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. So what's everything we have here? Okay. This is a bit of bread, which we eat all the time, back mm -hmm. home. Beans with olive oil. Mm -hmm. And this is eggplant, mm -hmm. okay, or baba ganoush. Baba ganoush. Baba ganoush. Baba ganoush. And pickles, uh -huh. pickles, and lemon. If you want to put with this, and the most important, which is made now, is coming soon. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Baba ganoush. I like that baba. Mm -hmm. Got the baffle. It's hot. Mm -hmm. I love the baffle. Mm. So we just ate, guys, and now we have tea, fresh mint. Hassan has the coffee. Oh, look. And this is traditional after you eat, you know, to have everything yeah, it's got settled. A so go ahead, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, bro, that's how you gonna do it. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna throw it right on him. One more scoop. All right. Real men do. Oh, that's hot. We're gonna wait. <laughs> that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. That's hot. Watch you it's dripping hot. on your legs. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's put that back there. That's the lighter. Yeah. Can you see the lighter? <laughs> no problem. Here. You are a musician. No problem. How you do it? No problem. Do it again. One more? Do one more. One more here. Where'd that come from? <laughs> yeah, really? He is gonna do it. He's gonna do it. Really? He's really doing this. Oh, that's a nigga. He is whipping. That's the last thing I expected to see come through the street. He can drive <laughs> anywhere. That's a Mercedes, but that's a man right there. You see the hand? That's the hand of a man. Light work. Whoa. Oh. That's a man right there. Let me tell you. That's if, if that was me. All this would have been knocked down. Yeah. I would have took all that with me and under that bus. That's wild. That's that's incredible. You didn't you didn't warn us about that one, Hassan. Yeah, that's incredible. That was a surprise. <laughs> had lunch. We're still at the bazaar. Looking at everything. Anything you want, you can find here. You got a uh, little light it up. You got jewelry, you got clothes, you got keychains, all the tour stuff. Anything you want, you can get here. It's basically like a, a big flea market. So if you've been to any flea market in the States, 
It's the same thing. What's up? I have nothing. I'm sorry, sorry. So, you can get luggage, you can get rugs, carpets, you can get uh, lights, you can get vase, you can get incense, incense holders, anything you're looking for, wallets, you can get here at the bazaar. Besides the pyramids, the next noticeable thing is the presence of cops and military throughout the city, and that's to ensure your safety. It's not that it's unsafe or I felt uncomfortable while I was there, but that's how they keep it that way. So your whereabouts as a tourist are known as soon as you leave the hotel because you're always walking through checkpoints and signing logs everywhere you go. So when you leave, they know. When you arrive, they know. And if something happens and they need to come and get you, your location, oh yeah, they know. Whether you jogging, walking, or just standing in Egypt, you're gonna be sweating because it's hot. So, so I'm gonna go back in the AC. What's up, y'all? It's our last day, so we was like, gotta show y'all where we stand. Come on. We're staying in Cairo at the Mina House, which opened in 1886. 1886? Yes, in 1886. And furthermore, opened the first pool in 1890. 1890? Yeah, 1890. And since it's been open so long, all kind of famous people lived here. Like who? Like Winston Churchill, Frank Sinatra, Ali Selassie, Charlie Chaplin, Obama, even Roman Cam. Who? Me and you. Never mind, but besides having great pyramid views, the best part about staying here is a five minute drive to get to them. So if you in Cairo, you want good food, good service, and good views, stay at the Mina house. And this is not even a promo. It'll just that good staying here. Where? Alright y'all, this is our last time seeing the pyramids. And today, we officially leave tomorrow. It's been a great three weeks of travel. It's been a hell of a stop here in Egypt to end it on. So, we don't want to leave, but we got to get back so we can leave again. And that's on Pyramid. And that's on Pyramid. <laughs>